You thought you were going to watch these two baddies duke it out, but it is I, Combo Breaker, and I have things to say. For one, I want to say happy birthday, Dad. You're one of the greatest people in the world, and I really love you. I really hope you enjoy this episode, and thank you so much for all you've done for me. I love you. Next up on the things to talk about is a far less important thing. But uh, yeah, let me just shamelessly plug my Discord right quick. There will be a link to my Discord in the description where you can talk to me, suggest battle ideas, help with research, make fan art, and just do all sorts of fun shit. It's really fun in there. I really hope that you all go in and join. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and move on to the episode. Every great story has a hero that's willing to step up and fight even the toughest of opponents. Whether it's through brains and equipment like Link or raw skill and power like Ryu. But for every courageous hero, there's an overwhelming evil who tries to dominate the world. And today's combatants represent this perfectly. Also, they're the strongest patties in video games and quite frankly just have a connection of red hair and purple magical key stuff they used to attack with. I'm of course talking about Ganondorf, the King of Darkness and the wielder of the Triforce of Power. And Akuma, the raging demon and the wielder of the Satsui no Haru. Oh yeah, Street Fighter, the OG fighting game full of original characters like Ryu, Ken, Dan, Sakura, and Akuma. Wait one fucking second, they all have the same moveset! Who the hell made this fucking game? Why couldn't they come up with a single original moveset? I mean, even the characters who don't have the same moveset of Hadouken, Spin Kick, and Uppercut still have really similar movesets. Look at Guile and Sagat, they have a projectile and an uppercut type move. Oh, 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 oh Street Fighter, why can't you come up with an original moveset? For the love of God. Uh, and anyway, Street Fighter rants aside, let's hop right into my favorite Street Fighter, Akuma, and his powers and abilities. Akuma has the ability to control his key for a plethora of cool abilities and special techniques that I'll cover in just a little bit. On top of that, he has two transformations that make him far more badass. Huh, key and transformations. Oh my god, Akuma's a Dragon Ball Z character, isn't he? Oh, that makes him so much cooler. You know what, I'm just gonna move on before that sinks into how stupid that sounded. The first one of Akuma's transformations is Shin Akuma. This transformation does not make Akuma a giant Shin. Instead, Akuma gives up all of his morality and gains a boost in all of his stats, making him far more powerful overall. His second form is his Oni form. This transformation is Akuma's max potential, when he lets the Satsui Nuhado take full control over him. Not only does he give up all morality, but he also just gets a massive stat boost. This also allows him to electrify his Hadoukens and even fucking fly. I don't remember the ability to fly in Street Fighter V, but apparently that's a thing. Oh, and on top of all of this, Akuma will fight to kill all of his opponents. Yeah. Also, it makes him blue like a smurf. Or like that girl from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> You're turning violet, Akuma. Oh, that was a really shitty joke. I'm sorry about that one. Akuma also has a shit ton of badass special moves he can use to dominate his opponents in a fight. Such as the Go Hadoken or Great Surge Fist, which might I add is the most metal sounding name I've ever heard. With this move, Akuma fires a powerful key blast at his opponents to dish out massive damage to his foe. He also has the Zenku Hadoken, or Air Slash Surge Fist. Again, super badass name. This is basically a Go Hadoken fired in the air. Why the hell did that deserve to be its own move? It, it's just the same thing, but in the air. Oh, I'll never fucking understand video games. Or if he needs more power from his projectiles, he can always use the Shinketsu Hadoken, or Scorching Heat Surge Fist, which is a flaming Hadoken, because Hadokens are not badass enough. Let's light that shit on fire! Because obviously, everything is better when it's on fucking fire. What's that? You got a sword? Light that shit on fire. You got your house? Light- actually, don't do that one. Do not light your house on fire. I take it back, not everything's better on fire. He can also take his Hadoken to the next level with the Mizatsu Go Hadoku, or the Annihilating Great Surge. Again, super fucking badass name. This is basically a large purple key beam that he launches out his foes to completely destroy him, just like a Dragon Ball character. Man, how many times am I going to make references to Dragon Ball during his analysis? I don't know, but it, it seems like it's gonna be a lot. He also says this Go Shoryuken, or Great Rising Dragon Fist, which may be the most badass name for one of these so far. Basically, this move is an uppercut similar to Ryu's Shoryuken, except it's described to be far more lethal. And actually, if you've seen any Akuma gameplay, you would know exactly why it's more lethal. Akuma also has the Tatsumaki Zengakiyuku. I probably just fucked up that name, but it's also called the Tornado Slashing Air Leg. With this move, Akuma performs a spin kick that allows him to fly through the air like a helicopter. Except with more kicking and less chopping. If Akuma needs to travel around the battlefield even faster, he has the Asura Senku, or Fighting Demon Flashing Air. 
Man, these names went for badass to being really fucking stupid. Like, look at this shit. Uh, anyway, with this move, Akuma puts up one leg and does a pseudo-teleport, where he essentially glides forward, becoming completely intangible somehow. Fucking somehow. I, I will never understand video game logic. Like, how does putting your leg up make you turn intangible? Ugh. By far, Akuma's strongest technique, though, is his signature Raging Demon, where he glides at his opponent and then grabs them before blitzing them with a series of attacks, completely destroying their fucking soul, which is honestly the best way to end any fight. Think about it, you're standing over your fallen enemy, he's like, oh my god, please spare me, and then you destroy his soul. Actually, that might be a bit intense. Still badass, though. He also has the Kangu Kaku. Uh, yeah, no, fuck no, I can't pronounce this one. So, this attack is basically where he punches the ground after channeling all of his key into a massive attack. This causes a massive purple energy blast to launch out and just hit everybody in the area. Basically, it's one of those moves in fighting games where you have to hit the ground and something appears a little bit further away from you that's practically impossible to land at all because the space has to be perfect, and by the time you put in that button in pit, you've already eaten 16 Hadoukens in the fucking face. Ugh. Mm, I'm having bad flashbacks to Mortal Kombat 9's Freddy Krueger. That stupid claw move. And with all those out of the way, let's go ahead and cover Akuma's feats. And my god, is he a fucking monster. Akuma's strong enough to beat Ryu in almost every encounter they've ever had. Akuma's also one-shot M. Bison with his Raging Demon, and he's fought and killed Goken. And apparently he's perfected his art skills too, I mean look at this beautiful ass painting. He still isn't nearly as lethal of a painter as Vincent, but I mean, that's still pretty fucking impressive. On top of that, he's also defeated Heihachi and forced Kazuya into his devil form. Then he managed to fight Devil Kazuya evenly. Keep in mind that uh, Kazuya and his devil form caused a volcano to fucking erupt. Because that is the most hardcore feat ever. I mean, look at that shit. He caused the volcano to explode. Akuma's also managed to fight and kill several jack robots who are able to destroy mountains and cities. Not to mention he's killed Gil, who's by far the most spammy and fucking cheap ass boss in Street Fighter history. God, I hate him. You get him down to like one health and then he fucking resurrected, you'd be almost dead, and it was... Ugh. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, um, but most impressively was the time that Akuma sunk an island that had mountains on it with a single fucking punch. That's what you get for canceling the Lilo and Stitch TV series, you bastards. Akuma is fast enough to fight and beat Ryu who could dodge point-blank bullets. He's fought and beaten Heihachi who could catch bullets in his teeth and Hadoukens. Hell, Akuma even fought and bison his prime during Street Fighter Alpha 3 when he dodged a laser from fucking space. Akuma is also incredibly tough, as he was durable enough to trade blows with Ryu. He's also fought against Goken and Aura, who are incredibly powerful martial artists. He's taken hits from Heihachi, Devil Kazuya, and in his own form, he survived a point-blank volcanic eruption. All incredibly fucking impressive feats. On top of all of this, Akuma is also a master martial artist. He's skilled in using the Satsumi Hado and the Assassination Fist martial arts style. He's managed to defeat several martial art masters, uh, seemingly with no problem too. While Akuma may be a badass and ruthless killer, he's far from perfect. Yeah, you see, Akuma's easy to anger and tends to hold back against his opponents just to test their strength before he goes all out. On top of that, someone can survive the Raging Demon by temporarily removing their soul from their body. Some fucking how, I don't actually understand how that one works. And also, Akuma is an in-your-face fighter who likes to be in control of the battlefield with his combos. So if he isn't controlling the fight, then he's at a huge disadvantage. Hence the whole glass cannon mechanic you see in almost every Street Fighter game he's been in. Anyway though, this is one Raging Demon you shouldn't cross, especially if you value your life. Or your fucking island. What does this man have against islands? I am Akuma, and I will teach you the meaning of pain. Ganondorf. Pure evil incarnate. He is literally the resurrected version of Demise, the god of evil and destruction. But more importantly, he's the only male Gerudo to exist for hundreds of years. Man, Kandorf probably doesn't have to try to get all the ladies he wants. He's like Barney Stinson, but an evil warlock. Hell, he probably gets all the Gerudo ass without even trying. Actually, why the hell is he so evil? He literally can have all the ladies he ever wants, ever. But then again, I guess if the Gerudo ladies look like, well, this, and then Zelda looks like fucking this, I, I guess I can't really argue with his choice for world domination, especially if it means he can get some of that. So let's go ahead and talk about Gandor's arsenal of weapons and tools, and I don't mean the kinky ones. Uh, okay, I'll stop with the sex jokes for now. Anyway, Gandor has wielded several weapons over all the games, and yes, I said games. As according to the Hyrule Historia, all of the Ganondorfs across all the games, with the exception of Four Swords Adventures, are the exact same Ganondorf, meaning we have plenty of games to take for his magic abilities and weapons. For one, he's wielded dual katanas like some sort of super badass ninja, as well as a large ass broadsword meant to cleave through people like a hot knife through fucking butter. And in Twilight Princess, he had an incredibly powerful holy sword that it was known as the Sword of the Sages. On top of that, he also wears armor to protect himself from most wounds, but his most impressive tool in his arsenal is by far the Triforce of Power, 
A glowing yellow triangle that Gandorf gains immense physical and magical power from. Huh, a glowing yellow triangle with immense power. Why does that sound so familiar? <laughs> I'm sure it's nothing. Anyway, despite what Smash Brothers will have you believe, Gandorf is a powerful warlock, not your disrespectful heavyweight brawler. This is best shown with his plethora of magic attacks, such as the Dead Man's Volley, where he launches an electrical magic ball at his opponent that can be hit back and forth, creating an incredibly deadly game of tennis. He also has the Fireball Ring, where he creates a ring of fireballs that can grow and shrink in size, as well as be launched out in several different directions. Gandorf also has his Blazing Bats attack, where he can create a horde of flaming bats to attack the poor bastards that get in his way. Not only will they be burned, but they'll probably get rabies. Yeah, magic fire rabies. Actually, that sounds terrible. Shit, burning rabies with dark magic. I take it back, I don't want anybody to get that shit. He also has the Darkness Wave, where he launches a continuous wave of pure darkness that prevents enemies from getting any closer. Honestly, it's like the most menacing thing ever. Imagine you're just trying to walk into a room and Gandor's like, oh fuck no, and all of a sudden there's just a wave of darkness keeping you from moving forward. Oh, uh, it's so cool. Gandorf can also trap him and his opponents in a room that he creates, and in this room, movements are completely fucking reversed for everyone except for Ganondorf. Oh god, imagine how confusing that'd be if you tried to move left and you're going right and vice versa and you tried to go forward and you go backwards. Oh god, I can already feel my motion sickness kick in. Let's just move on before I vote. Uh, anyway, he can also create phantoms on horseback that can fly around and attack his opponents, as well as phantom Ganondorfs. And he can also summon and launch tornadoes or giant blocks of ice, in case he needs to send those bitches back to Oz or sink their asses like the Titanic. Was that too soon of a joke? Ah, probably not. Titanic happened a while ago. He can also create magical shields to protect himself or barriers to block off opponents. And a Twilight Princess, he had an ability called the Twilight Clouds, where he covered a large-ass area in clouds that anybody caught in it was turned into nothing but a powerless soul. Wait, why does that sound so familiar to the character we were just talking about? Uh, I'm sure it's nothing. And of course, no boss character is complete without a ground pound. Especially when it launches out shockwaves. Honestly, it's the most cliche attack ever. Ganondorf can also use his magic to form the flame choke attack. He simply dashes at you, grabs you by the throat, and then uses magical fire to burn you to death. He can also teleport around the battlefield, which makes fighting him a pain in the ass. He can also possess people, regenerate from most wounds, create illusions to distract foes, use telepathy, or turn fucking invisible. He can also use his magic to manipulate almost every element, curse foes to slowly die like he did with the Great Midoriya Tree. Oh wait, that's not right, fuck! I meant the Great Deku Tree. Yeah, Great Deku Tree, not, not My Hero Academia. Let's, let's, let's pretend I didn't say that one. Anyway, Gandorf can also seal people away or banish them to the Dark Realm. He can also just straight up trap them in a crystal that not even Zelda can escape from. But then again, it is Zelda and she isn't exactly the Incredible Hulk, so I, I guess they're not that powerful. With the Triforce of Power, he is immune to soul-based attacks. Hell, not even Midna was able to destroy Ganon's soul, and she's ridiculously powerful. Not to mention, Gandorf can create bodies of pure hatred and malice, which is just the most hardcore as all hell thing ever. Like, play the Metallica, that shit is badass and hardcore. But by far, Gandor's most powerful technique is his ability to turn into his beast form, Ganon. In this form, he turns into a large pig-like beast, who has his own set of powerful magic and weapons to use. In his beast form, Ganon can wield a large set of twin swords, or his far more powerful trident of power, which is the evil equivalent to the legendary Master Sword. I don't understand how a sword and a giant fork are similar, but hey, we'll just let it slide for now. He also used the trident to launch out powerful magic beams that damage his opponents or straight up banish them to the Dark Realm. What is all this banishment shit? Just kill him, Ganondorf. You're the literal king of darkness. Stop banishing people and just kill them. <laughs> Honestly, I guess you could really say that Ganondorf in this form is really going ham. Eh? Eh? Is it, is it a joke? Because he looks like a pig? I'll, I'll move on to feats before I embarrass myself even more than I just did. Ganondorf is an absolute fucking monster in terms of power. He's traded blows with and fought several different incarnations of Link, such as the Hero of Time, who could lift and throw large stone pillars 64 times his own size. He also had the power of the Six Sages helping him out during that fight, and Gandorf in one timeline still managed to kill him. Hell, he's even taken on the hero of the Twilight, who could wrestle Gorons easily, and hell, he even trained with the young Link from Majora's Mask hundreds of years into the future, who could beat island-sized bosses who sealed away the four giants. Keep in mind, those four giants could hold up the fucking moon, among other insane feats. And he's also fought several other Links across the timelines. Gandorf has also killed the great Deku Tree with a single curse, murdered a sage with a flame choke, and he's crushed the fused shadow with his bare hands. He's rotated the planet a full 180 degrees casually, plus he is also Demise, who created a realm with a fucking star in it. Yeah, that's ridiculously powerful. Gandorf's overwhelming power does not mean he's slow. It's actually quite the opposite. Gandorf is fast enough to dodge sword slashes from Link, and Link in almost every incarnation can either dodge lightning or dodge lasers from Beemos or Guardians. On top of that, Gandorf himself can dodge near point-blank light arrows. 
Keep in mind, those are made of, well, fucking light. Gandor is also incredibly tough. He's able to survive several slashes and stabs from multiple incarnations of Link, even when they're wielding the Master Sword. Not to mention, he can show he can easily withstand his own magical attacks being launched back at him, as seen in Ocarina of Time. Hell, Light Arrows only stunned the man, and he even managed to survive his own fucking execution, and then kill the sage that did it, and then steal their sword. Because video games love to give the big fucking middle finger to logic. But by far, one of Gandor's best attributes is his intelligence. He's incredibly intelligent, as on multiple occasions, he's taken over all of Hyrule through manipulation and behind-the-scenes planning. He's also taken down and captured Zelda several times, despite her having the Triforce of fucking wisdom. And what is that thing good for if she gets captured every two seconds? On top of that, he's fought against several Links, who I really don't need to explain how smart they are. Just play a Zelda game and you'll understand that they're freaking geniuses. As for weaknesses, Gandorf really only has one. Gandorf has shown a weakness to holy weapons, however it's clearly not that crippling of a weakness as he did survive his own execution by holy weapon thanks to the Triforce of Power. So does he really even have a weakness? Are holy weapons really even that bad against him? No matter what though, if there's a hero, Gandorf will be there to corrupt the world and take that hero down. <laughs> Alright, our combatants are set, but only one red-haired powerhouse villain can fight their way to a win. So let's settle this! And Bison runs at Gandorf to attack, but Gandorf grabs him by the throat and lifts him up. He then starts to laugh as M. Bison struggles to escape his hold. M. Bison yells out in anger as Psycho Energy blasts out of his body, causing Gandorf to drop him. M. Bison then charges up to attack Gandorf, but Akuma flies towards M. Bison and grabs him. In a flash of purple light, M. Bison falls to the ground lifeless as Akuma looks at Gandorf. Gandorf laughs evilly as he floats into the air with his arms crossed. He then raises one hand into the air as electricity forms around him, creating a sphere of magic. Gandorf then throws at Akuma, who fires a Hadouken, colliding with him midair. The magical blast fires back at Gandorf, electrify him as he falls to the ground. Akuma then runs over to Gandorf and hits him in the jaw with a Shoryuken, launching him into the air. Akuma then jumps into the air after Gandorf and spin kicks him in the head, launching him to the ground. Akuma then lands and looks down at Gandorf as he laughs out in victory. Gandorf then stands up and looks at Akuma before lunging forward and grabbing Akuma by the throat. Gandorf then punches Akuma, launching him back and flying through the air. As Akuma flies through the air, Gandorf teleports behind him and draws his sword, slashing Akuma across the back. Akuma falls to the ground with a nasty slash on his back as Gandorf levitates upwards. Akuma stands back up and he looks at Gandorf, who levitates above him condescendingly. Akuma then jumps up at Gandorf and punches him across the face before falling up with a powerful Shoryuken. At the top of the shore, Yukon, Akuma grabs Gandorf by the head and slams him straight down the ground, causing smoke and dust to erupt upwards. Akuma then raises up his hand and charges up Key, getting ready to slam it down. As Akuma's hand comes crashing down, Ganondorf creates a barrier that blocks the blast of energy as it erupts up, launching Akuma back. Gandorf then stands up and draws his sword as Akuma rushes at him. Akuma does a jumping kick towards Gandorf, who launches out a wave of darkness. Akuma is then stopped as he drops to his knees as the wave of darkness hits him. Gandorf then walks over slowly, grabs Akuma by the neck, and lifts him up. Gandorf then starts to squeeze his throat as he shoves his sword straight through Akuma's chest. Gandorf then rips his sword from his body and throws Akuma's corpse to the ground. He laughs out in victory uh, and turns around to leave, but he stopped as he hears a menacing voice behind him yell out, I am Akuma. I shall teach you the true meaning of pain. Gandorf turns around to see Akuma who has bright blue glowing hair and his skin is turned a pale blue. Akuma runs at Gandorf and hits him with a powerful palm strike and follows up with a powerful high spin kick. Akuma then quickly continues his combo with a Tatsumaki Senpukiaku that levitates them both in the air as Gandorf gets kicked several times. Akuma then grabs Gandorf and drops him to the ground, creating a blast of energy when they hit the ground. Gandorf then teleports in front of Akuma and cases Akuma and him in a large room. Akuma tries to charge forward, but he starts to move backwards. Gandorf laughs as he slowly walks over to Akuma. Gandorf then draws his sword and slashes Akuma across the chest twice before kicking Akuma to the ground. Gandorf then pulls back his fist and powers it up with powerful dark magic before throwing it forward with a powerful punch, knocking Akuma against the wall. Gandorf then teleports in front of Akuma as he slowly starts standing back up. Akuma then grabs Gandorf and yells out, DIE 1000 DEATHS! Purple energy engulfs the room, shattering it, sending them both back to the real world. Akuma stands back up as the energy that was surrounding Gandorf starts to fade, showing a completely unaffected Gandorf as he begins to transform into a large pig-like beast. Akuma then begins to charge up a powerful Hadouken as Gandorf finishes his transformation. Akuma fires the blast at Gandorf, but it seems futile as Gandorf raises his swords. Ganon then slams down his sword, smashing Akuma into a bloody pile of mangled flesh. Ganon then roars out in victory before reverting back to his human form and walking over to Akuma's corpse. 
He then lifts him up and throws him aside, yelling out, PATHETIC! Oh, what a surprise! My favorite fucking Street Fighter character takes another loss! Poor Akuma, he hasn't gotten a single fucking win! First Darth Vader, then Black Panther, and now Ganondorf! Well, our winner is Ganondorf, and oh boy, this is gonna be so fun to explain. When it came to strength and durability, Akuma could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ryu. He fought Heihachi from Tekken, and on top of that, he's taken on and killed Goken. Plus, he managed to sink an island that had several mountains on it with a single fucking punch. So in his base form, he's island level. On top of that, he can transform into a Shinakuma or Oni form where he gets a power boost. However, it's completely unknown how much stronger he gets. But let's be super fucking generous for a second say his Oni form puts him at continental levels. However, this is being incredibly generous, and there is nothing backing this up. We're just doing this to give him the absolute benefit of the doubt, and you'll see why this massive boost still wouldn't fucking help. Ganondorf is a physical monster. He's trying to fight several different incarnations of Link, ranging from Ocarina of Time to Twilight Princess. He could casually rotate the planet 180 degrees, and not to mention he killed a sage with a single flame choke, and Ganondorf is also Demise, who created a realm with a star in it. So Ganondorf is easily star level in terms of strength and durability. Yeah, so even if we grossly overestimated Akuma's strength in his Oni form, Ganondorf absolutely shits on Akuma. Like, he could literally one-shot him by blinking. You know what the real kicker in all this is, though? Most of Ganondorf's minion monsters, like King Dodongo, are about island level. So yeah, Akuma is literally fodder in comparison to Ganondorf. He would be the equivalent to one of Ganondorf's minions. You know, the ones that he bitch slaps easily? <laughs> yeah. But what about speed? Maybe Akuma could make it up in there, right? Well, Akuma can scale the likes of Ryu, who can dodge bullets, and Heihachi, who can catch bullets in his teeth and dodge Hadoukens. He was also able to beat M. Bison in his prime, who dodged a laser from space. Unfortunately, due to the distance between the laser and, well, M. Bison, this is only massively hypersonic. So Akuma does have massively hypersonic speeds, which is impressive, but, uh... Gandorf has fought against several different links who have dodged lightning and lasers from Guardians of Beemos, and Gandorf himself can dodge light arrows. So Gandorf is relativistic to faster than light. So Gandorf is just shit-ton faster and a shit-ton stronger than Akuma. But in case all that wasn't enough, Akuma also has no way of doing anything to Ganondorf. For one, all of Akuma's moves, like the Shoryuken, Hodoka, and Tatsumaki Senpukiyaku, they may be flashy and cool and all, and they're all together really good for combos. They're just physical attacks and key projectiles. And as I mentioned, they aren't strong enough to do very much to Ganondorf. Yeah, they might sting slightly, but that's all they're really gonna do. But then compare that to Ganondorf, who has several swords, a plethora of elemental attacks and magic abilities, who could easily counter anything that Akuma has. Not only would he counter him, but he would easily dominate him. And then there was Ganondorf's more ridiculously powerful magic spells, such as creating phantom clones to fight alongside him, or you could always trap him in a room where all of Akuma's movements would be reversed. Could you imagine how much of a mindfuck that would be if you couldn't move properly in the middle of a fight with fucking Ganondorf, the King of Darkness? Not to mention, Ganondorf could always send Akuma to another realm with one single attack. But what about the Raging Demon? You know, Akuma's big, powerful ultimate move. Obviously, that has to be Akuma's ace in the hole and the only way he could actually beat Ganondorf. I mean, it literally fucking destroys your soul. But, uh, yeah, that literally would do absolutely fucking nothing to Ganondorf. During Twilight Princess, Minda tried to destroy Ganondorf's soul and it just didn't work. And Minda is a shit ton stronger than Akuma. And on top of that, Ganondorf could do even worse to Akuma. Ganondorf could always just use his Twilight Clouds ability to unleash a massive AoE that causes everyone who's hit by it to be a powerless soul. Add on all of his other ridiculous magical powers and his beast form, and Gandorf easily destroys Akuma. <laughs> Honestly, there's a reason that Akuma is the raging demon and Gandorf is the king of darkness. Looks like Akuma got Ganon dominated. Oh god, that one was fucking terrible. Our winner is Ganondorf. <laughs> All right, let me give a huge ass shout out to Z Dog S for making this next time trailer. I really hope you enjoy it. So, uh, next time on Combo Breaker.
Yes, it is finally time for one of my most fan requested matchups ever. Ever since I brought Rick Taylor onto the show to fight Jack Kamen, this has been one of my most requested fights. So I present Rick Taylor versus Doom Guy. Anyway, let me know what you think of the matchup in the comments below. Give me your predictions and have a wonderful day, guys.